Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger and my friends. Today we are talking JP in Street Fighter 6. Now, like we have done for both Manon and for Marissa, we're just going to go over everything we currently know about JP. There's not tons of footage out there, yet still we can glean quite a few insights into the character. Especially given how different he is. He may be a quote unquote zoner, but not like Guile, where Sonic Boom's just a dominant projectile. But it's more the fact that he's a screen control character. He can limit your movement because he'll make you scared to move. In a lot of ways, uh, he actually seems a lot more like a NetherRealm Studio character, like a Mortal Kombat character, than a Street Fighter character, and I actually find that very interesting. So that all said though, let's just break it down. Let's talk about what JP can do. Now, first up, and this one seems super core to the character, is the reality tear. Now, we don't have proper names for these moves yet, so this is just what I'm calling it. But yes, the reality tear, he places it on the screen, and then, well, a lot of things can happen from there. The most basic of which is, if you just let it rock, eventually it explodes on its own and shoots out this kind of like dagger, this pillar, and smacks you across the face. So this is what happens if you do nothing. However, you can be active with it. So once the reality tear is placed, you can also, in a separate command, choose to just detonate it manually. No wait time, just go for it right away. Which once again helps with the screen control aspect of the character because I can let it go or I can just do it at any time of my choosing. And yet another option is he can use it basically as a teleport point. So wherever the reality tear is placed, he can then burn it up as it were and then teleport to it. And if it's on top of the enemy, basically just teleport on top of the enemy's head. Now to note, naturally this isn't a free attack. You can see here Blanca parries it very easily, but it is an option in your tool belt. Just don't be too predictable with it because you might find a sure you can waiting for you on the other end of that teleport. Another note to keep in mind is he has control over where the reality tear is. It could just be as simple as like late, medium, heavy is close, medium, far, something like that. But yeah, he has different placements you can put them in to help the screen control aspect. Conversely, if you would like to spend some meteor, you can get an EX version of the move and it places two reality tears on the screen at once. And they both go off, although they go off in different timings, staggered timings. So that's very handy. And yes, you can teleport to them. And yes, you can detonate them manually. So you're probably starting to see, yes, uh, this is the screen control aspect. You can make it scary just to walk around because you got to deal with all this nonsense on the screen at once. Like in this clip right here, JP is just walking Blanca down because Blanca doesn't want to commit to anything while that thing's on the screen. And you know what? Fair enough. The options just aren't there. And it's going to be common in enough setting because every time he knocks you down, basically he's going to be able to set one of these up for free unopposed. Now, it's not all doom and gloom for the defender, however, though. If you do manage to hit him while the reality tears are up, they do go away, as you can see in this clip. Once Blanca hits JP with the Blanca ball, the tears that are already on the screen go away. So you can take the momentum back, you just gotta be a little bit risky about it. It's a very powerful mechanic, but it has at least some small fault to it. Now, one thing to note here, because it's only in one tiny bit of footage, but there may be some very small amount of tracking. So here the tear is placed and then Blanca does the ball, it's blocked and he bounces underneath it and the tear explodes directly on top of him. It's not angled like all the other shots. So the projectile that comes out of the reality tear may try to do its best to hit you wherever you currently are. So if it can indeed attack from multiple angles, not just that one set diagonal one, it makes an already seemingly very strong mechanic even stronger yet. This is definitely one of the core aspects of the character for sure. Now, another core concept of his character seems to be the psycho powered constructs, and we'll just call them ghosts from now on for ease of use. And he's got quite a few flavors of them. On a basic level, the regular ghost comes and does a bit of a claw swipe, hits mid, but we also have one that can travel across the screen and seemingly hits overhead that you have to block standing. And we have one that also comes and hits low. Now these options here, especially the low and overhead aren't as fast paced or you know crazy as like a rushdown character would be. But once again, remember with all the reality tears and all the other stuff you can put on the screen, your mind's gonna be occupied. It's not about pure reactionary speed. It's about just throwing so many options at you at once. Eventually you're gonna guess wrong. Also helped by the fact that one of the ghost options is effectively a grab. It is unblockable. 
So if you happen to be worried about blocking overhead or low against the ghosts, while well, say the reality tears are on screen as well, then you screwed up because this is unblockable. You had to jump or otherwise not be in the way. So once again, this is another layer of his insane screen control. Once you're scared and start blocking, well, you shouldn't have blocked because these big bad unblockable ghosts are coming your way. Another layer to his pressure as well when he knocks you down, as once he's knocked you down, it seems very easy for him to set up one of these ghosts and have it attack you on your wake up and once again, overhead, low, all that kind of stuff. He also seemingly has maybe a fake ghost, a ghost that does not attack. As you can see here, it just comes out and just sputters out, no claws, no nothing. So either this is a feint or maybe the ghost has like a trigger radius, depending on the button you press. And if they're not in range, then no attack comes out. Time will have to tell on that one. If it is a feint though, I think that'd be pretty cool because his uh, recovery on the ghost is pretty long. And if you try to jump, he has pretty solid anti-air combos. Let's put it that way. And we do know what the EX looks like. It's this guy right here. And it's basically seemingly enough, just a proper juggle starter and he can get follow-ups after the fact. Nothing revolutionary, but you know what? It doesn't need to be. Getting your juggle on is reward enough. And now the third pillar of his game plan is, well, the pillar. I got no other word for it here. Uh, very similar to like Jax's Ground Pound, Sea Viper, Seismo, Nikali's V, Skill 1. It's effectively a non-standard projectile in that there is no travel time. It goes to a fixed point on the screen and then goes off there. I'm very sure light, medium, heavy is the distance is controlled because you can do it up close, you can do it medium, and you can do it far away. Traditionally in fighting games, these types of moves are very strong. And it's another very strong aspect of how he can control your movement across the screen because once again, there's no travel time. It just goes off immediately. So while you're trying to navigate the maze between all the ghosts, the reality tears and all that kind of stuff, he can hit you exactly where you are at any given point. Now, of course, naturally he has to aim it. So if he guesses incorrectly, then JP will probably get blown up. If you're charging forward and he goes for the far one, thought you're gonna stay still, then he's gonna be left wide open and get attacked, right? Although if you're willing to burn a little drive gauge, then we get two pillars and we eat up even more screen real estate. So all the more deadly yet. And the pillar seems to be the go-to combo ender for a lot of his combos. So just tons of utility across the board. It's going to be a workhorse of a move. As far as his supers go, we do know all of his supers. So level one is fairly basic. It's just a solid projectile and it looks to be a very large projectile eating up a good chunk of the screen. Maybe not the flashiest super of all time or anything, but seems to be very good at what it does good in combos and potentially catching people doing stuff at full screen because it does look to be fairly fast. Now his level two super is very interesting, very different from what everyone else has so far, at least that we've seen anyways. So he does his pose, his super activation, and then a bunch of the cycle powered ghosts start flying out from all corners of the screen, uh, coming in from high angles, coming in from low angles, and at a delayed manner as well. So it's not happening all at once. So this is the only footage we have and Blanca unfortunately dies right away. So we don't get to see the full breadth of it, but on paper, it looks like it's basically another lockdown, another screen control sort of deal. While the ghosts are ongoing on the screen, you probably better start blocking. And then of course, better start dealing with whatever mixups JP wants to put you through. Very interesting stuff. Now the level three, we only have a truncated look of it, but it's enough to give us a good idea what's going on here. JP basically teleports to the enemy and infuses them with psycho power. It looks like you can see like the pink lines going on Ken's head. And eventually it looks like he's gonna hit you with one of the really big pillars. You know, he was saving that for the super move only and then hanging you out to dry. The only thing I wonder, uh, given the very beginning of the move, the startup here where he sort of does the teleport, is what is the range of the move? It's basically blink and you'll miss it, so I'm putting it as slow as I possibly can, but he becomes intangible at the very start of it before he rushes forward. And it might be one of those moves where it's like a reaction check move. If I catch you from far enough away, I can do this and zap forward and grab you. Maybe anyways, that's just a guess going by the animation. Unfortunately, there's still so much we don't know at this time, but still regardless, the end part shows he's the big boss and he ain't fooling around. 
And now just some odds and ends, just like a lot of the other new characters seems to have a lot of target combos. He does have this guy here, which seems to be a solid poke and also probably one of his main combo extensions as uh, there's quite a few examples of he's doing whatever given combo and then he can do the EX version of this and it's an immediate wall splat and then he can get various follow ups from it. The one thing though, uh, in this example here where he's already being juggled, the non EX version is used and we still get the wall splat and the wall bounce and a combo follow up from it. So it could very well be that if they're grounded, you have to burn bar to get the bounce. But if they're already juggled in whatever state, then you don't have to and you can get the bigger combo. So that'd be pretty handy. A lot of his normals seem pretty decent, not overwhelming, but like stuff like this seems to be a pretty strong anti-air normal. And the fact that it launches up on hit means he gets to set up whatever he wants to set up after the fact. So I think that'll help his uh, screen control aspect very well, that it's kind of scary to jump at him if he's just waiting for you, let alone the other combo you just saw, right? And then we got some real oddball stuff like this guy. So this is definitely a counter of some sort, but very non-standard to say the least. Normally fighting game counters is like, you trigger the counter and then I throw you or something. Here, projectiles start floating around him, similar to like Rose's Ultra 2 in Street Fighter 4, like the sole satellite. So he'll do it and obviously he won't get killed, at least normally not anyways, when he does the counter. And then it's sort of like a weird tables have turned offense because now you have to deal with these weird projectiles floating around him. Now, whatever this move exactly is, this is definitely the EX version of the move because he is spending a drive meter to do it. So I'm sure it's stronger than whatever the base version is, but it's very interesting to say the least. There's not really much else like it. Characters with the amount of screen control and the amount of uh, ability to put garbage on the screen like JP tend to not have strong defenses. So him having a counter at all is very interesting. This is definitely something out of the character I'd be interested in seeing a lot more of. Because at minimum, it's also very flavorful to the character. If I get the counter, then I'm putting even more garbage on the screen. So that's everything we currently know for JP in Street Fighter VI. Not tons of stuff, but at least we have a solid idea of what the character is all about. It might be a while before we get more news. Uh, if you're unaware, there will not be Street Fighter VI footage at the Capcom Cup, which is unfortunate, but at least they let us know ahead of time. But yeah, it's still some months to the launch of Street Fighter VI, and a lot of these new characters are incredibly interesting and incredibly well done, and I am here for it. Maybe JP will wind up being, at least gameplay-wise, Street Fighter's version of Quan Chi, because honestly, I see quite a few similarities between the two characters. Let's just hope he's more manageable to fight against than Mortal Kombat X Quan Chi. <laughs> That said though, my friends, well, that's the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Street Fighter.